Uncle Fredrickson's amazing balancing coaches were introduced to the Grimburn Railway located on the island of Morotoses to the design of Archibald E. Fredrickson in 1870. Their most unique feature, indeed the one from which their name is derived, whereby the coaches balance on a single axle, actually came about as a result of the economic situation of the island of Morotoses. Because ships were banned from docking at the island during the bulk of the 1800s, coal prices there were sky high, at one point approaching the value of gold. Therefore, railway travel was extremely expensive and the need for economical travel was paramount. As a result, the Grimburn Railway sold railway tickets in advance of each journey and rakes of coaches were assembled to accommodate the exact number of passengers for each trip in order to maximise fuel economy and to avoid wasting coal by hauling around any empty seats. Hence, any large coaches were completely uneconomical and so 15 so-called balancing coaches were built like this to solve the problem. A unique shunting yard was constructed in order that consists could be efficiently assembled and the design suited the Grimburn Railway very well as the network was circular, removing the need for coaches ever to be reversed. No coaches were ever reversed in service, so nobody is quite sure what the outcome would be, but Uncle Fredrickson certainly warned against it. At the end of 1906, the shipping ban on Morotoses was lifted and this changed the economy there quite significantly. Among other things, this caused the coal price to very much normalise, meaning that larger coaches now became the most efficient option, rendering the balancing coaches obsolete. Over the summer of 1907, the balancing coaches were disassembled and rebuilt into more conventional bogey coaches, with no original examples being preserved. I've been doing an awful lot of 3D printing recently and a couple of months ago I decided that I wanted to release a new product for Christmas. And this is it, it is Uncle Fredrickson's Amazing Balancing Coaches. They're available to order now from my shop, they're £20 for a pack of three plus postage and packaging and there are links down in the description for you. The coaches are 3D printed right here in this room by me, which makes them a pretty good Sam's Train souvenir, makes them quite suitable for Christmas. However, it does mean that they're not up to the standard of a professional manufacturer. They are produced on quite inexpensive 3D printers, so the layer lines are kind of visible and there will be minor imperfections in the bodywork. So please don't buy these expecting a super serious, super high quality model uh, because the 3D printers that I use can't achieve that. But for what they are, I am pretty proud of what I've been able to create and today's video is going to be showing you how I created these things, talking a little bit about how I've been able to produce them. I'll also show you what you get for your 20 quid and of course I will also be demonstrating the coaches for you. So let's start off with a little bit about the chassis design. I mean this is the most iconic feature of the balancing coaches, the way that each coach sort of balances on a single axle. So I decided to take one of my existing chassis designs and modify it into a balancing coach chassis. So literally this started by just cutting one end of it off and of course I had to clean up a lot of the messy lines and stuff to leave it nice and tidy and then I could set about converting it into a complete balancing chassis. So I filled in the old framework so that I could start up with a completely clean slate and I was very careful to leave the wells for the wheels in place as well. This means that the wheels can be fitted to the model without fouling on the chassis. The next job was to construct a matching buffer beam on the cut-off end of the chassis and this needed to be exactly the same size and shape as the existing one on the other end in order for them to match of course. Now the real balancing coaches never had any traditional buffers on them, they used wooden cylindrical blocks instead to absorb any shocks, so I'm replicating that on my model, I'm capturing that cylindrical shape as best I can. Now these coaches are going to use NEM couplings because that's the standard over here. So obviously I'm adding another NEM socket to the back of the chassis and I'm going to talk a little bit more on the couplings later because that's quite an interesting feature. I also need a way of locating the bodies onto the chassis. Now usually I use two round pegs for this but due to the reduced size of the balancing coaches I'm going to use one single square peg. The square shape of course should allow the bodies to sit in the right position and then to be glued in place at the customer's discretion. And that's it, that is the chassis design done for the balancing coaches. So with the chassis complete, obviously the next step was to develop a body to fit onto the chassis and what you're going to see now is what I came up with. 
So here's a look at the actual body design for the balancing coach. The bodies consist of a single passenger compartment capable of seating six passengers and a more luxurious design featuring four seats instead of six did exist, but only two of those were built and this six seater version was the most common design by a long way. Now the most striking feature of the balancing coach body design are the circular open observation windows at each end of the body and this allowed communication up and down the train as well as for objects to be passed between carriages which apparently was quite useful. I've continued this circular motif on the sides as well as per the prototype with the rounded edges and also the circular decoration above the windows. And there are one or two small details as well, including the fine armrests which are fully formed and also the little door handles with the grab rails included as well. So at this point I was almost finished with the coach design, but obviously there is still one major missing part and that is the roof, so let me show you that. So the roofs are going to be fairly simple with the traditional shallow arc forming the top of them. And the models do include the single electric light in the centre of each roof as well. And then there are slots on the underside of the roof uh, so that it can be snugly fitted onto the body. Again, to be glued on if you wish. So now you've had a pretty good look at the coaches in the digital realm. But next I want to show you exactly what you will get if you decide to buy a set. So here they come right now, the actual physical balancing coaches. The thing about creating a 3D printed product is that it's pretty slow. Production for these coaches has taken a long time. We're talking about two or three months at the point of making this video. But to be honest, it's a process that I've really enjoyed and it's been quite satisfying as well to actually have something interesting come off at the other end of it. So you can see here the various different components being produced. I use my Flashforge machine to do the chassis and some other little parts. And then the uh, Mingda machine has been doing the bulk of the bodywork, the roofs and also the couplings, which I'll talk about in just a second. Yeah, it's been quite a long and sometimes tedious process, but quite a rewarding one as well, of course. So here is what you get for your £20. You've got the three coaches, which are individually bagged. You've got an accessories pack, which I will go over in just a second. You've got a little card here, which just says which number uh, your pack is. And I've also put my name on it. And I did use the Hornby Centenary pen for that as well, if anyone's interested in a little bonus. And then you've got some little glazing pieces, which again, like everything else, are optional to fit if you want to. So let me show you how this stuff goes together then. So we'll take out some of these coaches are individually wrapped there you go so here is the first coach and it's made up of three different parts as you can see you've got the body the roof and the chassis and from me these are not going to be glued together because I want to leave you free to paint the coaches if you want to to fit the glazing you want to fit passengers you can do um, so yeah it's all sort of unglued the roofs do actually fit on quite snugly most of the time let me show you this with a little bit of a snap uh, so those you probably don't ever want to glue on but you could if you wanted to and then like I said earlier on the bodies just locate onto the chassis so that they sort of stay in place let me show you that if I can yeah they stay in place but they're not stuck uh, but a little dob of glue on the little locator there and that will be permanent if you want it to be so let's grab the other coaches and I'll, I guess I'll try and show you what I mean by surface defects because <laughs> that sounds really bad uh, but no it's just because of the uh, the 3d printers uh, let me see how's this one yeah this one's not too bad you might, might not be able to be able to see it on camera but on the ends here you've got a little bit of uh, sort of uneven texture uh, i've tried to fix it and i've definitely improved it a lot but uh, it's still there a little bit so there you go again that uh, fixes onto the chassis but you can glue it on if you want to then we've got the third one and these do include metal wheels, that's another thing. So there are metal wheels included for your 20 quid. You don't have to source the wheels yourself. These are supplied. Right, so there's obviously a bit of a problem though with these balancing coaches. If you put them down onto the track, they just fall over. <laughs> they don't work like a normal coach would. And so that's where the couplings come into play. I've actually had to develop a brand new type of coupling for these coaches and allow me to show them to you. So inside your accessories pack, you get two standard NEM couplings. These are the type that you're more familiar with, I would think. And then you've got three of the Sam's Trains Balancing Coach couplings. And uh, I'm quite pleased with these, actually, because these couplings allow the three coaches to support each other 
uh, without falling over. So they're quite strong and actually quite robust, but they do allow complete rotation, as you can see like that. So here is how you put the coaches together. You've actually got a spare one of these Sam's Trains couplings. I think it's always good to have a spare. And it also means that if you buy more than one pack, you can couple them together and have a rake of six. So I'm going to, well, since the bodies are not glued on for me at the moment, I'm going to take the chassis off and I'm going to couple them together. So these go in, uh, you can put them in any way you like. Uh, there's no right or wrong way, but because I'm OCD, I'm going to make sure they're all the right way around. Okay, and they are just NEM couplings. They do have uh, sort of NEM stems on them, so you can just couple them together like that. And then I guess for completeness, I will put the standard NEM couplings on each end like this. And that means that the coaches can be coupled to any loco you like. Although obviously, if you couple them to a massive diesel or something, it will look a little bit silly. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, you've got nicely coupled coaches. This is actually a lot of fun to just mess around with, actually. Yeah, it's great fun. And here is how strong the couplings are. <laughs> you can actually lift them up. Not recommended though. Yeah, be careful with the couplings. Uh, they are strong, but don't test their uh, don't test their strength too much. And then we can pop the coaches onto the chassis. This is where it can be a bit annoying if they're not glued on. So yeah, it's probably I ideal to glue them on if you want to, but you don't have to. Like I say, they'll stay there if you don't glue them on. They're not going to come dropping off, but yeah, if you're lifting up and down the models and such, it's easier to have them uh, glued on. But there you go, they've got full rotation. Okay, and then finally, of course, I am going to be including glazing pieces like this, and I'm not going to start fitting them now because it's dead easy, but I will just show you what you have to do. So you just take your scissors or your craft knife or whatever it is that you want to use, and you just cut along the line. I'll just do this for one set of windows. There you go. And then you can peel the glazing off the paperback. There you go. And then what you can do is you can remove the roof of one of the coaches. You'd use a little paintbrush or however you would usually do this uh, to just apply a small amount of PVA glue. That'll work on the inside of the coach. And then you use your tweezers or if you brave your fingers and then just position the plastic piece over the windows like that. And then you'll have glazing in the coaches uh, and obviously allow it to dry and that sort of thing. But yeah, that's what you can do if you'd like to have glazing and these will be included. Okay, so that's everything you get if you buy a set of balancing coaches. Now then, it's time to demonstrate them and prove that these are actually functional. Okay, here we have it then. We've got the three balancing coaches on the track. And when they're on the track, the balancing effect, as I like to call it, is a bit more pronounced, uh, particularly if you've got sort of more than three. <laughs> you get sort of cool effects. And you can make them do strange and crazy things as well, like this. Yeah, it's pretty cool because no other rolling stock, of course, can do that. Now, obviously, I've got three here. Unfortunately, you cannot run just one balancing coach on its own because it will tip over. So you need a minimum of two so that they can support each other. Um, but three is recommended, hence why I'm making these in sets of three. Uh, you could, I suppose, try to use one of the balancing couplings to couple a loco uh, to just one coach. But they are very close coupled, so it would have to be a loco that doesn't have any buffers or something. Anyway, let's do a bit of performance then. So I've got a lovely pecket here to do the haulage. Unfortunately, no Morotosis locos actually exist in model form, but uh, they would all be sort of smallish and quite efficient locos like the pecket's are. So as you can see, yep, yeah, they work. Uh, they're quite free rolling. And if you stop them in reverse quite suddenly, <laughs> you get a really nice sort of brake effect. Let's do that again. Ready? Boing. <laughs> right, so it's really cool watching these things go around curves and stuff because obviously the individual coaches are able to rotate based on the track that's directly underneath them and this effect is sort of magnified with more than three coaches so I'll show you that in a sec. But here we go, let's send off the Peckett around the track with just three balancing coaches to start with. And as you can see, they're dead stable. It took quite a lot of work to get the couplings right but uh, they are right now and as you can see, they hug the curves quite nicely and they run without derailing, which is pretty cool. You'll notice I'm only running them forwards in this video, and that's because weird and wonderful things happen when you try to reverse them. I won't tell you what those things are, I'll let you find that out for yourself, but I will say that they stop themselves from reversing, just like the real things would, but they don't derail. There you go, so you can guess what happens. But I think it's time to add another three coaches and see what they look like in a bigger rake because, like I say, the uh, sort of balancing effect 
is quite a lot better with more of them. So let me do that. So if you wanted to, you could couple two sets together using the NEM tension locks supplied. But in this case, I've used one of the spare balancing couplings to couple them together because they're closer coupling and you get a sort of better effect uh, with them all coupled close together. Uh, like I say, yeah, you've got a really cool sort of balancing effect with this, particularly if you twist them. As you can see, you've got the whole rake moving as well, which is pretty awesome. Yes, I love that effect. Well, I've twisted one of the bodies off now. Yeah, for all of the tests that you're seeing today, none of the bodies are glued on, which proves that you don't actually have to glue them on if you don't want to, but it is a bit annoying having them come off so easily. So again, that's entirely up to you. Anyway, pecket time, let's see. And they are nice and free rolling, by the way. So even a little pecket can handle them quite easily. Right, let's have a little run with six balancing coaches. There you go. Yeah, it's an incredibly bizarre thing to see, isn't it? I mean, I'm quite used to this now because I've been working on them for a number of months. But I do remember when I made a prototype balancing set and I saw them run for the first time, it was quite mind-blowing. So hopefully you're getting the same sort of feeling from this. Yep, yeah, coaches balancing on a single axle. It's a ridiculous idea, obviously, but the Grimburn Railway made it work and now the Sam's Trains Laboratories have made it work as well. So there you have it, the Uncle Fredrickson's Amazing Balancing Coaches. If you want to get yourself a set, uh, you know, as a Christmas present or as a bit of a souvenir, it's a fun novelty, links down in the description. There aren't going to be that many of them. Like I say, they take hours and hours to produce, so I've made as many as I can, but it's still not a huge amount by, you know, normal production volume standards. Uh, so if you want one, hopefully you'll be able to get a set uh, if you act quickly. Maybe I will do some more sort of balancing rolling stock in the future. That might be fun, but uh, yeah, I'm not making any more of these. All proceeds from the sales of the coaches is going to go back into the channel. So if you're looking for ideas as to how to support the channel and keep the videos coming and fund the reviews and such, this is a way that you can do it. And obviously you get something back in return as well. So that is just about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you decide to pick up some coaches, I hope you enjoy those as well. If you do, please do send me some pictures and videos of them at work on your railways. I'd love to see that. But for now, thank you very, very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. You take care of yourselves. All right, ta-ta for now.